Hello everyone and welcome to The Mess. My name is Jake, also known as Plant Gay for Life. So I recently gutted and remodeled my mini terrarium here. I added in some new things. I put in some new moss, rearranged some of the old moss that's been in there for a while and doing really well. And I just wanted to take you guys on a little tour because I made a few terrariums over the years and I have some other terrarium videos on this channel. So let's add to the mess. All right, let's get into it. So we'll start with this really cool tree looking thing right here. This is a Biophytum from Ecuador. Possibly the species Saucupii or Socupii. The leaves fold down at night or like in the later afternoon. So it's later afternoon now, so the leaves are starting to fold down. Those are the leaves that I had when I got it. I got it from an Equigenera pop-up and I'm very excited because there are new leaves growing right there, a whole bunch. There's actually two, I don't know if it's two different plants or if it's two stalks, but there's two little trunks in there. See right there, one and two right behind it. So it's kind of big, a little bit awkward. I'm kind of hoping I can dwarf it a little bit. I would love for those new uh, fronds. Uh, I would like for them to be bonsai a little bit, maybe not get quite as big as the other ones. That way it can kind of keep that tree look. But yeah, I really love that. As you can see, it's kind of like a maroon underneath the leaves right there. And then like a dark purple on top. Really, really pretty. Now there's theories as to why this plant, as well as many other plants out there, will fold their leaves at night. One theory is to shed water droplets to avoid fungal infections, because these are for the most part terrestrial plants. They grow in the deepest shade, in the wettest places on earth, in the rainforest. So you can imagine that fungal issues are probably quite the occurrence. Another theory could be to protect itself from any herbivorous insects or animals that might try to nibble on the leaves. Another theory that I read is to retain water at night. So other plants with a circadian rhythm, which is the closing of the leaves, like Marantas, Royal Poinciana, which I actually have, and it does the exact same thing. Mimosa pudica, which is the sensitive plant that actually will also close when you touch it. All these plants love moisture. So to me, that theory seems plausible because this is a plant, and these are all plants that love moisture, and they would probably want to hold on to as much as they possibly can. Their roots are very, very thin, so they're really not able to store any type of water. But that is a really interesting one. This is a Margravia, which is a terrestrial vine of the New World Tropics. And funny enough, I actually read that it's pollinated by a bat known as Thomas's Nectar Bat, which I thought was really interesting. Apparently that's its only pollinator. Quite an interesting symbiotic relationship right there. But I love to just take these cuttings and put them everywhere. I have them in here in several places and I have them in my large Ikea terrarium cabinet as well, and they're great. Moving down here, we have the only begonia that I own, <laughs> but I own several cuttings of this, and they're kind of all over the place. And I'll insert some B-roll of the prettiest ones, or some pictures if I have any. This is a creeping begonia native to the island of Borneo. They are beautiful begonias. If you get one, put it in a terrarium, because otherwise they will just melt. They love moisture, and they love high, high, <laughs> humidity and when it gets just enough light not too much not too little it puts out these beautiful red leaves it's just chef's kiss darling down over here we have a lightning jewel orchid which is Makodi's petola it's native to southeast asia and it's a terrestrial orchid only about 30 percent or so of all orchid species and there are hundreds maybe even thousands i'm not even sure but there's so many species of orchids because there's only about 30 percent of them that are terrestrial most of them are epiphytic so it's definitely a great terrarium piece and it adds a nice little pop of color. Look at those leaves right there. Yeah, there's one leaf that's melting, but I just planted this guy. So you know what, don't at me. I just love how it looks like it's glowing or something. Nature, who gave you the right to look this sickening, to be this 
fashionista that you are. Oh my god. You know what? This plant right here is better than every outfit of this year's Met Gala. I'm just telling you right now. Moving over here is a sundew or drosera. And it's a carnivorous plant. I actually put in pretty much all of my carnivorous plants except for my pitcher plants, which I love. I want to highlight them and have them in their own pot. But I took the rest of my carnivorous plants and put them in here just to kind of consolidate and uh, have a little bit more shelf space for some other plants that were in my grow tent. But yeah, they capture insects using mucilage. Hey Siri, pronounce mucilage. Tuned in. Consider subscribing for more learning how to ding pronunciation. Otherwise, mucilage. And yeah, you stupid. Whoever that is, that's a creep. What a creep. 48 second video, that should have been five seconds. Just say mucilage and end the freaking video. You know what? But it uses mucilage. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, the mucilage is are the, like the little sap droplets that cover the leaves, and they use that to capture the insects. Let's see, are there any fungus gnats trapped in there? So once in a while I see uh, a fungus gnat trapped in there, and I love it. I just love it, guys. Screw those little bastards. And they're native to every continent except Antarctica. Isn't that crazy? Okay, moving over here, we have two different varieties of a Venus flytrap, also known as Dionaya musip muscipula, 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 <sighs> Venus flytrap. It's from Venus, guys. You know Venus has life on it? It's from Venus, guys. We've had extraterrestrial plants on this planet this whole time. We just, I just told you. Isn't that crazy? You just heard that from Plant Gave for Life. I cannot hold this stupid thing. Anyway, so right here we have two varieties of a Venus flytrap, and if I pan up a little bit, you can see that it is about to flower, but it's not blooming just yet. But flowering hopefully means that it's happy. Um, I have the green one with the red on the inside, and then if you look kind of like there and there, we have ones that are like a dark maroon red inside and outside. So very, very interesting. I love these things. I love washing them close. So if you hit, oh, oh. <laughs> I was gonna say, if you hit one of the little hairs and then you hit another hair within about 20 seconds, then it will close. And if I take this brush out, oh, it's really holding on, <laughs> you little rascal. It will open back up because it needs to feel vibrations in there. It needs to have a living insect, something in there that it can digest alive. These are uh, actually modified leaves, by the way. Oh, that one I just triggered too. But basically, yeah, wait. Look, <laughs> they're eating each other. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> what? Oh God. Oh, I've created anarchy in here. Wait, what about that one over there? If I just, if I hit one, see it won't close. Now one, two, three. It's been 20 seconds. Now if I hit it again. Oh! Did David Attenborough lie to me? Maybe it knows I'm trying to trick it. Maybe, maybe it's smarter than I think it is. Look, they look like little eyelashes, cute little eyelashes. And when you poke it, the eye closes. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm making you use all this energy to close all these traps and I'm giving you no food. Sorry, man. But you know what guys, you would look at this and think, oh, this has to be native to like some remote island in the Philippines or like somewhere deep in a rainforest or something. No guys, it's native to the temperate and subtropical wetlands of the Carolinas. That's right guys, Eastern United States. Like what? So yeah, it's a modified leaf that only closes if two hairs are triggered within 20 seconds, but I guess David Attenborough lied to me. And again, the plant will only digest if five or more stimuli are activated, ensuring that it has caught a live prey animal worthy of consumption. 
Now, while these are widely cultivated and very inexpensive and easy to get your hands on, they're actually declining in the wild. Now, I'm not sure if these are being poached because there's just so many on the market. I can't imagine they're being poached, but probably either because of climate change and or deforestation, land clearing, things like that. These guys, they're only endemic to a very specific area in the world. They're very, very precious to Mother Nature, so. So hopefully there are efforts out there to protect them in the wild. And then what else do we have in here? We have, oh, right over there, I just stuffed some of this in there. This is a, right there, let's say Selegionella. I believe it's Erythropus. It's native to Central and South America. And I put this one in there because hopefully that one is not going to grow as aggressively because Selegionella can grow pretty aggressively, guys. So as beautiful as it is, I don't put it in my small terrarium anymore because that's actually the main reason why I totally gutted my last one because I was just so sick of taking out all the Selegionella because it just kept coming back and coming back, coming back. And then finally, if we look all around, we can see all these different types of moss. All this moss may or may not be from Central Park, cannot confirm nor deny, but just look at all the different textures, even different shades of green. And I love this one here. This one looks really different. I'm not even sure if that's a moss or not. Oh, guys, I totally missed. Here's a sundew right here. So it's a different kind of sundew. Oh, I totally missed Mr. Butterwort. He flowers all the time. He puts out these cute little pink, purple, uh, purple, lavender colored flowers. And it looks like it's like popping or offsetting on the stem, which is really cool. It's offsetting like crazy all along here. Like, can you see all of those little bebes in there? But yeah, guys, just a short little video. I also put in this little tree thing. <laughs> Last thing, guys, right in there, I have a little dresslery chunk that sprouted in my other terrarium, and I put it in here to see if it would do anything, so we'll just have to see. I have other dresslerys, so I'm not like holding my breath, but let's see if it does anything. You know, you just never know. There it is, guys, there is the new mess. Oh, let me just tell you a little bit about how I made it. So I have a piece of cork right here for a little bit of a, a hardscape, like a little hill, a little slope right here. I hot glued the tree in there. I also, guys, hot glued some of the moss. Now, I don't know if you can do that or not, but I tried it out and we're gonna try it out because yeah, I want like a nice clean back wall, like a, like a living green wall, and then have like a slope come down. Just have it be nice and clean and open on the sides because if you just take a look back here, it just looks nice and neat and orderly, but so interesting at the same time. Look at that. Oh, I just love this. I love making terrariums, guys. I wish I had more space for terrariums, but I do got this big guy. <laughs> oh, just real quick, guys, let me show you that Selegionella. Just a few little cuttings, and just a few months later, look at all this. Look at all this. So it's fun in here because there's a lot of space, but yeah, it's growing there, it's growing there, it's growing everywhere. And if you're interested in a tour on this, I have a video tour on this. If I can remember, I'll leave a link for it below. Big terrarium and little terrarium and squeaky floor. <laughs> All right, guys, have a great day, night, week, month, year, whenever you're watching this, and I'll see you in the next video. This has been Jake, also known as Planky for Life.